It's Saturday night, and we're about to discover who's got stars in their eyes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Matthew Kelly. Welcome to Stars in Their Eyes. Now, I don't want to tempt Providence, but I think there's definitely a hint of spring in the air. I can almost feel the sap rising as we speak. Mm. Flowers are blooming in the parks, lambs are gambling in the fields, and roadworks have started on the M6. But in spite of all that, you cannot deny it. there's a certain feel-good factor creeping into the national consciousness, and that's what this show is all about. Making you feel good. Because once more, five-star guests are going to brighten up your evening like a bunch of daffs. So let's find out about tonight's budding talents and meet star guest... Number one. My name's Tracy Creasy and I come from Northampton and I'm a full-time mum to Kirsty, who's seven. I help out in Kirsty's class at St Paul's Lower School a couple of afternoons a week. I do really enjoy being with the children. I've been working with them now, the same class, for nearly two years and it's nice to see the children developing. The person that I'm going to be tonight is or was a very flamboyant character. It definitely reflects me. I've always been flamboyant in my dress, and I still am. I still can't um, calm down, <laughs> as my mum puts it. <laughs> when I knew I was going to be on the show, I was lying down on the hall carpet for about an hour. I couldn't get her. <laughs> I was in shock. I'm still thinking, oh, this isn't happening. <laughs> but it is. With umbrellas in the street. He's a mum and a half, all right. Say hello to Tracy Creasy. <laughs> Tracy, are you prone to lying down on the hall floor, are you? It seems so, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Were you rescued after the hour? Were you? Yeah, yeah. What made you do that, though? Well, I was sitting out in the hall taking a phone call when I was going to be on. Yeah. And um, as soon as they said, you're on the show, I just fell back on the hall carpet and I was just lying there. In shock or in ecstasy, was it? I don't really know. <laughs> Bit of both, I think. What did Kirsty say? <laughs> she came out and said, get up, Mum, what are you doing? Oh, no, she must be a very confused child. No, no. So she wants to be on Stars in Their Eyes, does she? Oh, yeah, she does, yeah. And uh, who does she want to be? She wants to be the person I'm going to be tonight. Why does she want to do that? Because she says she can do it better than me. She... <laughs> oh, yes, Kirsty, is that right? She thinks she can do it better than you. She well, does, yeah. she'll have a hard act to follow because I've been watching you through rehearsals and you're very good. I don't know whether you could beat your mother, Kirsty. Now, you've never sung as this person before, I have you? No. No, but, you have, but you've sung in bands? Yes, I have, yeah. Is that what you like to do? Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. What's the worst job you've ever done? Uh, putting jam in donuts. <laughs> 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 I can't imagine why that should be the worst job ever. What would you like to do for a living? Um, definitely put the lottery balls in the machine. Well, so you think you'd have a better chance of winning? That's right, You've yeah, got no yeah. chance, Pet. Yeah. Make sure my number's going. But, <laughs> well, I think your number might be up tonight. Oh, you never know. Now, you never know. I think you'd better tell us who you and Kirsty want to be tonight. Oh, well, tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Toya. Toya! <laughs> Terrific! The doors are waiting, my dear. It's a mystery no more because tonight, singing live, Tracy Tracy is Toya! Some 
that you sound like Toya, which you really do as well, and that's what people vote on. But it's all those movements as well. I mean, it was identical. And I tell you, if your Kirsty can do any better than that, you must be a genius pet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tracy Creasy as Toya! <laughs> well, if you had trouble working out who Tracy was going to be, wait till you see star guest number two. My name is Martin Dominique, I'm 31 years of age, uh, I'm from Portsmouth and I'm very keen on DIY. Uh, if I'm not doing a job for myself, I'm generally doing one for friends. Sometimes uh, a job can take longer than first thought and uh, you might end up leaving a little bit of a mess uh, some nights. When I was at primary school, um, I was in the school choir and uh, we actually done a Christmas concert in Winchester Cathedral and I actually had to sing a, a small solo spot. I think from that age, really, I'd always hoped in the back of my mind that I was going to become a, a singer. I asked my father who his favourite singer was, and he said, it's the gentleman that I'm going to be doing tonight. And I started listening to some of these old records and thought I could sound a little bit like him, and uh, so I really worked on it. Obviously, I'd like to do really well on the show and perhaps go on to bigger and better things. This chap knows how to bring the house down, Martin Dominique. <laughs> so, Martin, you've had many different directions in, uh, in your life and many different directions in your singing career. So, you started with this solo in Winchester Cathedral. What did you sing? Uh, oh, come, all ye faithful. Did you? Yes. As a, as a boy soprano? Yes, yes. And what was the next phase of your singing career after that gave you the taste for it? Um, I got into sort of a heavy rock bands and, um, and that, side of, that side of the music. Really. He heavy rock? Heavy rock. It's a natural yeah. progression from boy soprano, really, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, you applied for this show, this was the next phase, you applied for this show about four years ago? Yes, I actually uh, uh, sent off uh, to do um, Billy Joel. And you got the audition as Billy Joel? Billy Joel, yeah. And did you do it? No, I chickened out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, you see. But you're not going to be Billy Joel tonight. No. And I don't think people are going to guess who you are going to be tonight. Uh, how did you get into being this person? Um, well, I started um, singing lessons a few years ago and uh, asked my father at the same time who his favourite singer was. And he told me, and so I went out and bought some records of this gentleman and just started to listen. So you'd never heard this, this person I before? I didn't know who he was, no. 
And you're hoping this is going to lead on to bigger and better things? Yes, um, uh, my ambition is to sing at the Albert Hall and to be the fourth tenor. The fourth tenor. Now, this is a very big clue. And you have no idea who this man is going to be. So you better tell us, Martin. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Mario Lanza. Mario Lanza! The late and the great, with memories of the silver screen tonight, she rides. Martin Dominique is Mario Lanza! Green. That was like reincarnation, that. <laughs> Thank you. Do you feel spooky to you? Yes, very. Oh, it was great. You'll not be going back to heavy rock now, will you? Uh, not a chance. No, no. I don't no. think so. You don't need to. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Dominique as Mario Lanza! <laughs> well, as Martin goes off to dream about becoming the fourth tenor, here's another young man with designs on fame and fortune. My name's Ian Thorpe, and I'm originally from Wakefield in West Yorkshire. And I moved to Glasgow about six years ago um, to come and work here at the Art Gallery and Museum, Kelvin Grove. I'm a graphic designer, and I work in the Creative Services Department. So that means that I'm kind of doing uh, graphic design for exhibitions and just general kind of uh, leaflets and books and posters, anything that goes to make an exhibition. Glasgow is very fortunate because um, the people of Glasgow believe in the museums and appreciate them tremendously. I've been a fan of this person now since my teenage years. His music took me through my formative years in school, uh, into my college days and so on. He always seemed to be writing about the things that I was thinking and it was very relevant. 
This feels like a dream come true simply because I couldn't have chosen a better person to be doing. It's going to be the highlight of this year. Is he cut out for stardom? Let's find out. Here's Ian Thorpe. So, Ian, you're the Yorkshireman living in Glasgow. Yeah, home, yes, yes. Oh, that's a contradiction in terms, really. <laughs> it's a good city, Glasgow. It's beautiful, yes. And what's lovely on that film is that you seem to be a chap who is mightily fulfilled in, in his work. Yes, I do. I really enjoy my work, yeah. So why would you want to be a singer on Stars in Their Eyes if you're so happy in your work? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's something that I enjoyed from a young age. I got involved in kind of plays and so on when I was at school. And it's something I always wanted to do, but I wanted to get a career first. And so the career is a graphic design, and here I am now trying to follow the other side. And so what do your friends think of you coming on uh, Stars in Their Eyes and wanting to be a singer? They really enjoy it, actually. They've been getting involved, um, kind of checking out everything that I'm doing and kind of keeping tabs on me the whole way, so it's been really good. But they do have a saying about you, don't they? They do, they do. They say, give me a spotlight and he'll perform. I know, we'll be seeing that in a minute well. Later, yes. <laughs> the, the man who you're going to be tonight, his, his work was very relevant to you when you were growing up. In what way was that? Yeah. As I was kind of growing up th through my teenage years, the music was there and uh, I just followed it continually and it kind of just was everything that I was thinking about was being echoed in the music, so... And you met the man? I met the man just over a fortnight ago in Glasgow. So he knows that you're coming on this show? He knows I'm coming on the show. Hopefully he'll be watching. And was he flattered that you're going to be him tonight? I think he was, yes. <laughs> well, I think you'll be impressed as well. Tell us who you are going to be here. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Mark Armand. Mark Armand! A man from the new age of romance! A real exhibitionist tonight singing live! The Thorpe is Mark Armand! Become a singer with a Spanish bum who sing for women of great virtue. I'd sing to them with a guitar I borrowed from a coffee bar. Well, what you don't know doesn't hurt you. My name would be Antonio, and all my bridges I would burn. And when I give them something, no, I'd expect something in return. I'd have to get drunk every night and talk about virility with some old grandmother that might be dead out like a Christmas tree. And no pink elephants I'd seen, though I'd be drunk as I could be. I'd sing that song they sang to me about the time they called me Jackie. If I could be for only an hour, if I could be for an hour every day, if I could be for just one little hour, in a stupid ass way. And if I join the social world, the game procurer of young girls, then I can have my own bordellos. My records would be number one, and I'd sell records by the ton, all sung by many other fellows. My name would then be Handsome Jack, and I'd sell boats of opium, whiskey cocaine from Twickenham, authentic queens and phony virgins. I'd have a bank on every finger and every finger In every country, in every country ruled by me And I'd still know where I want to be Locked up inside my opium den Surrounded by some China men I'd sing a song that I sang then About the time they called me Jackie If I could be for only an hour If I could be for an hour every day If I could be for just one little hour in a stupid ass way. When my angelic work was through, the angel and the devil too would sing my childish song to me about the time they called me Jackie. If I could be for only an hour, if I could be for an hour every day, if I could be for just one little hour, cute in a stupid ass way.
can't believe you've done it, can you? <laughs> you can't believe it. Your friends are right about you. <laughs> Put a light on you, you perform. <laughs> and what a performance. Oh, thanks. Did you enjoy yourself? I really did, thank you. Yes, it was great. And did you hear that? Yes. God, I know that's that nice. a very well-deserved reception, that. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Thorpe as Mark Holman. <laughs> Give his vocal cords a rest now, but there are two star guests still warming theirs up. So why don't we take a break till they're ready? I'll see you in part two. <laughs> Welcome back to Stars in the Rise. You know, I was just sitting backstage with my feet up, having a refreshing cup of cocoa, and a thought suddenly came to me, and it was this: If Adam was the first man on Earth, did he have a belly button? Perfectly valid question, I think. Anyway, speaking of the Garden of Eden, let's meet our green-fingered star guest, number four. My name is Callum Jensen. I'm 40 years old, or is that young? I'm married to my wife, Avril, and we live in South Shields in the northeast of England. I've started off as what people might call an amateur gardener. There's much about the gardens that I don't know. I'm forever learning. And we go to the garden centres as often as we possibly can. It's quite leisurely. Um, trouble is I want to buy everything that I see. Ever since the start of the Stars uh, series, uh, Avril would say, go and get on the phone and apply, do him. And every year I'd say, no, nah, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. But uh, last year I picked up the phone. Uh, that's probably my age now, last chance perhaps. I'm very proud to be on Stars in Your Eyes. When I first applied at the very start, it was on the basis that I probably wouldn't go much further. But as it went on and on, my eyes were getting bigger and bigger. It's wonderful. Oh. It's what you might call a growing concern. Please welcome Callum Jensen. <laughs> so, Callum, coming up to 40 and a big thing for you. That's right, 40 years old, first time I've ever been it. Uh, looking forward to another 40, I mean... And is it a big watershed for you? It is indeed, yeah. I've done pretty well to get this far, yeah. Well, it's, it's the start of something new, but anyway, you should be used to this, being the mature man because you are a grandfather. Well, believe it or not, yes, I am a grandfather to the power of four. I've got uh, four grandchildren. Can I just say hello to them? Oh, please, them? please, yes. So I'll watch it tonight, and uh, so it's hi to uh, William, William. It's about that size. Uh, Katula, uh, Dan, Dan, and believe it or not, Liam Downey. How are you doing, kids? Granddad yeah. loves you Lovely. to bits. <laughs> They're big fans of yours, aren't they? Yeah. They will. They'll be very pleased to see you. grandfather. Because yeah. this, this is uh, a one-off for you. And you're a very big fan of the person that you're going to be. I'm a fan of the person that I'm doing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, I'm, yeah. I'm and he's watching the programme tonight. He's watching... I know he'll be That's watching this programme. He's watching it tonight, yeah. And, and I have proof for you that he'll be watching the programme because I had a call from him this week. Yeah. And uh, you've been rehearsing with a certain guitar that's a, re a replica of his. And that's he, right. He yeah. wants you to have the real thing to work with tonight. So, uh, Sandy, could you bring on that guitar for us? This is Sandy. Ladies and gentlemen, Sandy. Thank you. There you go, mate. So, Callum, tell us who it is you're going to be with the real guitar. Tonight, Matthew, I am going to be Steve Harley. Steve Harley, the Cockney rebel himself. He's proud to be a jury, but tonight's he lies. Callum Jensen is Steve Harley. Done it all, broken everything, and called the to the floor. You spoke the game, no matter what you say, the only metal water ball. Blue eyes, blue eyes. How can you tell so many lies? Come up and see me, make me smile I do what you want, running wild There's nothing left, all gone and run away 
Maybe you'll tarry for a while It's just a test A game for us to play Win or lose, it's hard to smile Resist, resist It's from yourself You have to hide oh. Come up and see me Make me smile oh. I'll do what you want Running wild Away, away And don't say Maybe you try Come up and see me to make me smile I'll do what you want, just pray why Well, being 40 is obviously no problem at all, is it? You look 22! <laughs> Fabulous transformation. And uh, the guitar, the real thing. How well, are you feeling about that? What can that? I say? I've just got... Thanks very much, Steve, uh, from your uh, living room in uh, Sudbury, is it? Or wherever, I don't know, but thanks very much, mate. Cracker. Ladies and gentlemen, Callum Jensen as Steve Harley! <laughs> and now it's time to check out our fifth and final star guest. I'm Samantha Tucker, I'm 17 years old and I come from Tamworth in Staffordshire and at the moment I'm studying A-levels and I'm in part-time employment at the co-op. I like dealing with the people and um, the girls I work with are very nice because they're always helping me out when I've got any problems. Going on Stars in the Rise is like a dream come true really because all of my life I've wanted to sing. Since I was three years old I used to pick up a, a wooden spoon and use it as a mic to sing and my family have encouraged me. I first discovered that I could sing like the person I'm going to impersonate tonight when I uh, bought my brother his birthday present which was a CD. I listened to it and uh, I th really thought that I could sing like her so uh, I kept playing it and he's still waiting for his CD now. He's a shell stacking sociology student, Samantha Tucker. <laughs> so cold. Tiny hands and freezing cold. That's not nerves, is it? No, no, they're always cold. No, no, I know it's not nerves because you've been smashing all the way through rehearsals. You've been enjoying I've, yourself. I've really you? enjoyed myself. Actually, we're, we're, we're lucky to have you here, really, aren't we? Because you're, you're not lucky with travel, are you? Oh, no, no. I've had a few mishaps here and there. Uh, well, we travelled down to St. Ives a few years ago and it took us four days to get there. <laughs> from, from Tamworth? Yeah, it's from Tamworth. Were you walking, were you? No. Yeah. No, we travelled by car, but it kept breaking down, yeah. so we ended up having picnics on the hard shoulder. Oh. <laughs> now, you're, you're really following in your mum's footsteps, really, aren't you? Because she's a checkout supervisor. Mm -hmm. But what are your ambitions? Well, I'd like to be either a singer or an accountant. There's a bit of a difference there. But... And only a bit, really. Yeah, just a bit. Well, I think <laughs> you should be a singer, because tell us who you would have applied for on this show. Well, I can impersonate a wide... A variety of artists, including Annie Lennox, Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, Madonna, Barbara Streisand. Yes. Oh, you can do her as well. Lloyd Webber material. But you yeah. didn't. You didn't choose any of those. No, I chose to be someone else tonight. Well, tell us who you're going to be, Samantha. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Lisa Loeb. Lisa Loeb, a new name for the '90s. From superstar to superstar, tonight, singing live, Samantha Tucker is Lisa Loeb. I only hear what I want 
Your tiny hand is still frozen. It is still cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were terrific. Really terrific. And may I say what a pleasure it's been working with you the last oh, couple of days. Yeah, it's been a pleasure being here. I've enjoyed it so much. And we've enjoyed it so much. We thought you might like the Lisa Loeb CD to give to your brother since you nicked the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Samantha Tucker as Lisa Loeb. And so Samantha completes the lineup of star guests this evening, one of whom will be going through to the live grand final on May the 25th to join Maria McKee and Bobby V, who have already booked their places. But tonight, the choice, as always, is to be made by our studio audience, who are waiting, fingers poised, ready to make their decision. So who will it be? Will it be Toya, Mario Lanza, Mark Almond, Steve Harley, or Lisa Lowe? Studio audience, cast your votes. Now. And the winner is Mario Lanza. This is an emotional moment, isn't it? It's taken you quite by surprise, hasn't it? Yeah. Steady now, steady. <laughs> you know, I thought you were going to go after you'd sung the song. I did, really. You did, didn't you? Yeah. And do you know you've got to sing it again? Oh, God. Oh, blind. Oh, no. <laughs> and how long is it to go since you started these singing lessons? 
Um, four years. Yeah. Four, four years. years. Blimey, who knows what the next four years will bring. Uh, well done. I'm so pleased Thank for you. you. Thank you. So Destiny has decreed that Mario Lanza is the next name to be added to the list of star guests that will make up the live grand final. I'll see you all again next week with five more star guests. Meanwhile, sit back and enjoy once again the dulcet tones, if he's ready to do this, Martin Dominique as Mario Lanza. Good night. like to appear on Stars in Their Eyes, please call free phone 0800 666 888.